Um, so yes, I work for Ordnance Survey, famous wherever I go for beautiful pictures such as these. People tell me how much um, they love a map. Um, but I, what I want to leave, leave you with today is that a map is just a mechanism uh, for engaging people, for deriving greater insight, and for making better decisions across a whole slew of, uh, of examples that I'm going to canter through. I want to start with the journey both through space and time, which are the two best vectors through which to examine data, uh, to the early 80s when a very lovely colleague of mine, Carl, was surveying this bit of the, off the coast of Scotland. Um, and he was carefully surveying the pylons, which are on the black line. Um, he went the next year and discovered, before the era of the satellite-aided centimetre accuracy technology that we now have at our disposal, that the pylons weren't where he put them the first time he was there. And he rang head office and said, what are you doing here then? And they said, well, boy. Um, the pylons where the wire changes direction are carefully placed accurately in the correct place. But the rest we just space out evenly because it's a bit easier on the eye. Um, and, and that was how it was in the early 80s because it, cartography was the art and data, and data was not about accuracy at that time. So rest assured, it's now much more about accuracy. And as, as, a, as, a, as a data company, we now are able to go from the beguiling and the escapism of the islands off, the, off Great Britain to these, the, their work, this piece of our, one of our graduates did last summer, which looks at the UK's uh, most complex motorway junctions, which is a, a wistful and interesting uh, representation. Uh, but it's not about the map, it's about the data. And what we have here are the, is the land use change statistics, which is some work that we've been doing on behalf of MHCLG for the last 10 years. So this is not about putting more stuff on the map, it's, use, it's using the place component of data to drive better decisions. And so I'm, I've put this rather lurid thing on here, but it, what this data has enabled us to do is understand what's happening to our green space, is to understand where and when new houses are being built, are they being built on Brownfield Land, for example, and how might we understand um, our high streets? It doesn't come out particularly brilliantly on this, but we can pick out high street extents uh, when we look at this type of data. And so it's not all, it's, um, here we're both understanding the current environment, and, and here's some work we did in a collaboration with Border Force to understand how they might properly define, uh, how much they might properly use their resources. Uh, so we, we worked with a number of other bodies, um, we worked with UK Hydrographic Office data and others to do a risk assessment um, to understand where, where the, the greatest risk of, of bringing aboard contraband goods on the UK coastline might be. Uh, we did it in um, 100, 100 metre sections and then were able to make better use of public money uh, by doing that sort of data analysis. Um, and so that, again, looking at the current environment, um, and, and here we were doing some work with other government bodies to understand the impact of decisions that were made. So we worked both with um, the, the public sector in Manchester and with the West Midlands Combined Authority to see the impact of price paid on price paid for property of infrastructure investment. So we're looking at um, the, uh, the Metro Line extension down to South Manchester and to Wolverhampton and, and New Street. And we were able to see very quickly uh, that the number and proportion of flats increased within walking distance of a new station and that people were paying more for those flats easily within the calendar year. We suspect that people are paying more for larger properties over a longer period and the data shows uh, that there is an increase in the number of net businesses within these type of areas. Now, it's very lumpy data and you are the last audience I would try and differ differentiate between causation and correlation. Uh, but uh, it, again, it's interesting information to look at. Um, so I've talked about how we might look at data in the past, um, but where, where's an opportunity where we might have used data better? Um, I want to take you to this road in West Yorkshire. Um, and here are the addresses, the dots, and the green space that are around that road. Uh, and that's, so that's data that Ordnance Survey hold. And it's looking at data through the prism of place, uh, where the traditional um, spreadsheets re relating to that property might not have been able to put them in quite the same context. And you'll notice in this road that it crosses a river. Um, and quite often when you've got a single crossing point on a river, it carries not only the transport links, but also the communications and power infrastructure that serve a community. 
Now, the, the sharp-eyed amongst you, in particular those of you at the front, will notice this is the bridge in Tadcaster, which was wiped away in the flood event of 2017. Now, everybody knew that their pipe was on that bridge. Nobody knew that everybody's pipe was on that bridge. Uh, and so there was quite a lot of disruption as a result of the flood event. Um, and um, and what, what we might have done, or what we, we may, we are, it is now possible to do, is to look at that information, um, do an analysis of weak points in the network, and as a retrospective analysis by Cambridge University revealed, used, uh, use Earth observation data, which would have told us that that, that bridge was wobbling with every passing rain, rain, rain shower um, and, and intervened appropriately. All the examples I've cantered through so far um, can be met with data which is currently collected and published by Ordnance Survey. But what about the Internet of Things? What about driverless cars? Um, what about this smart city? Will that not create, will that not have a need for better and more data? Well, the short answer to that is, of course, yes. Uh, and uh, this is a piece of work that we completed as part of a DCMS funded IoT uh, pilot in South Manchester where with together uh, to support the 20 partners um, who were looking for use cases and benefits from, from this new technology, we mapped three square kilometres um, south of Manchester Piccadilly and, uh, and, and found 48,000 additional assets on which we needed information. And for those of you who worried about the, what the little dots that appeared at the end were, they were the location of all uh, the CCTV cameras. Yeah. <laughs> My last slide is this. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my last, <laughs> my last slide is this beguiling video of uh, the UK water network, Great Britain water network, which I know um, has already been used uh, to to transform the way we do flood resilience planning in the UK. So I can tell you with every confidence that this has done exactly what we want to use geospatial information for. It's engaging. By looking at it, I'm sure you'll derive new insight. And it has transformed better decisions for a whole set of people across the UK. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Miranda. This is easily the most musical IFG data bytes I think we've ever had. Um, so we are going to come to the audience for questions. I will take them in groups of two or three. Please wait for the microphone to come to you. You are on the record. So again, if you are subject to pre-election guidance, come up with a funny name. It's fine. Um, <laughs> who would like to ask a question? We've got one over there. I'm sure there must be some others. If you're in the overflow room, please do come to the door if you'd like to ask a question. Uh, let's get started. And then we've got another gentleman here as well. Hi there. Every, every time Amazon drop a parcel off at my house, they, they record the location of my front door and are building a, a nice database for automated deliveries. What are Ordnance Survey doing to uh, incentivize growth in location products in the, in the UK and, and um, especially around open data? Thank you. If you just pass it down. And if you could tell us, um, just there, if you could tell us who you are and where you're from, if you're able to. Paul Hudson from the GLA. Um, I was interested in your very last map with the uh, IoT mapping. I just wondered, I guess, what insights you got from that and what you might do differently now. You've got it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, uh, so to incentivise growth and open data, um, you will probably know that Ordnance Survey are um, enthusiastic publishers of open data. Um, a number of our overseas colleagues tell us it's the, it's the best in the world, um, uh, both for its content and for its structure. Um, uh, and uh, so, you know, we're there, and we are the, the um, we are we do as we are told uh, by our shareholder, who is who is government. Um, and thank you, Paul, for the question on the IoT data. What we learnt there um, is um, that we should do it differently next time. <laughs> uh, and so, the next project we did was the work we did with um, uh, DCMS in Bournemouth, where we, rather than going out and collecting all the data ourselves and producing this monster of a map that was unupdatable, we linked together other people's data in order to have a resource that, that was at rest and could be analysed in a more appropriate way. And then those who were the owners of the update could, of the data could update it themselves. Uh, next set of questions. I'm very conscious of gender balance in particular. Who would like to ask a question? 
I've got one at the back and I think we've got one at the very front as well to make our mic handlers incredibly busy. Um, hello, um, in the autumn budget in 2017 yeah. we had a commitment to opening up MasterMap. Is there any update on opening up UPRNs and USRNs? Thank you. And I just wanted to ask, it's David Fletcher, I just wanted to ask what is the two things, what is the distinction between geospatial information and spatial information? Is there any? <laughs> And secondly, I just think, well, I mean, the Ordnance Survey is great, but I think that you're underselling the traditional uh, excellent mapping as a fan of the Ordnance Survey that you also do. And I, I'd just like to, you know, s say something in praise of that too. We, it's, a lot, it's a lot more joyful than just dots and, ma you know, it's a lot more to it than just uh, data even though that underpins modern Ordnance Survey mapping. That's more of a statement than a question, but... <laughs> uh, I've got a good answer for it. Thank you. Uh, on, the, on the open master map, I am not the best qualified person to answer it, but there are people in the room who are much better and more, and more up to date with these things than me. Uh, so don't let me get away with that, but I don't know the answer. Um, so there's an excellent article that I read last week that came from Australia because the Australian mapping agency have stopped producing paper maps. Uh, and they talked about the best maps tell the best little white lies because a, every map is a simplification of the real world. Uh, and answers a, a set of use cases and OS has a long and proud history of telling the best white lies and giving the best truth. Uh, and what differentiates um, a, a, an, an entity like OS um, is that we have to be transparent in the way that we bend and shape our data in order to make a world that is neither a perfect sphere nor flat um, appear, appear, um, uh, appear attractive on a map. Um, whereas those who, who might do it for different ends um, uh, may not be as clear themselves um, as to how that data is bent and stretched and therefore is less able to support, uh, for example, high precision location requirements such as driverless cars. Uh, so uh, so my, and the, the, my, the most awful story about driverless cars is the standard is yet to be agreed as to where a driverless car is. Um, and, uh, and, and that'll be important um, whether... Uh, <laughs> let's just agree that'll be important. <laughs> right. Next round of questions. Otherwise, I'll have to inflict some upon you, and nobody wants that. Um, we've got one there. Any more? And one right at the back as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was just surprised how much data the Ordnance Survey has, actually. Um, I can't really put this into a question, and other than, you know, how did you get to this point where you, you are so focused on, on data as opposed to maybe as we eulogize about mapping? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And then right at the back as well. Um, hi. I don't know if it's working. Uh, are there any security implications of making it easier for the public to put together different data sources? Thank you. Uh, yes. Oh, I love these questions. Um, so, um, data versus mapping. Um, it's been a journey. <laughs> uh, we were the first national mapping agency to digitise in 1971, which means we have the most archaic um, architecture on which this is built. Um, so we've made all the mistakes that other that other in, other other people are also learning, um, and. Um, and, and because I suppose there's, a, there's an unusual concentration at, at OS of people, um, of capability within a sing, single organisation. So in, when you compare us to other international organisations, um, the capability is much more diffuse. So it's, it's much less uh, and, and not as close to the market. So we have commercial customers as well as government customers. And that means that we are um, compelled to use our data for a multitude of use cases. Um, uh, so uh, the ethics question um, is, is a brilliant one, and I'm really glad you asked it. So um, we, we've launched an initiative a couple two weeks ago, which Ben's in charge of, um, called the Benchmark Initiative, uh, which looks at the ethics of location data. Because so often location is the element of data which strips all form of privacy from it, privacy and security from it. Um, and yet it is important in order to correlate data together. Uh, and so that's a, it's an almost impossible ethical conundrum, uh, but one we are exploring through a range of talks and events and entrepreneurship in residence programmes for which I would, in, which are funded, for which I would encourage all to apply. That's a free advert. And we've got time, I think, for one more question, possibly even two. Gentlemen there. 
Uh, with reference to what you said about Tadcaster Bridge, what steps have any of the OS taking to improve the mapping of utility infrastructure? Um, so uh, the Geospatial Commission um, have commissioned a trial. I'm looking for my colleagues at the Geospatial Commission, um, who are who are we are working with both the Greater London Authority and Northumbrian bits of Northumbria um, to look at the to look at uh, underground asset mapping in particular. Um, I'm also very excited by the work that the National Infrastructure Commission have done on the future of regulation, uh, where they've called for the UKRN uh, to take a much stronger role. Um, uh, within the sort of the, the management of data within regulated utilities. And we also welcome the work of the Energy Data Task Force, which is looking at energy assets, um, and most importantly of all, in my opinion, the National Digital Twin Programme fu fu funded out of CDVB and BASE. Thank you, Thank very, you very much, much indeed. indeed.